What's up everyone? Beautiful morning here, got my cup of coffee. And I've been promising you guys a walk around on this, uh, the new 33 boat here. And today's the day we're gonna do that. So let's get started. based on a 12-foot Buccaneer by Jetstream. The bottom part of the hull from basically here down was put together in Oregon by a company called Torchcraft Marine. Um, the owner, Troy, has uh, been amazing to work with. He doesn't normally build boats like these, but again, because of my background on off-road cars and uh, all the things that I've been involved in in my life, he was willing to step out of his comfort zone and work with me on these two projects. That being said, a lot of people ask, you know, where can I get one of these boats? And um, the, the quick short answer is Torchcraft Marine, Oregon. I'll put a link in the description below. If you want a custom build like this, it's a little more difficult than that. And I'm gonna go through the steps that it took to get these boats to where they're at. So I've been fabricating Oh, a good part of uh, probably 25 years, maybe even longer than that. I've been tinkering my whole life and always wanting to build something that's unique and one of, one of a kind. As I've gotten older, I've gotten away from the fabrication and more of the design and, uh, and pointing fingers and uh, asking people to do things the way I want them done using the knowledge that I've built over the years when I used to do it myself with my son. If you've watched the Mojo Boat walkthrough, you saw a lot of that uh, first step fabrication. The idea came from Blake Wilkie's death boat. And once I saw that boat, I was like, I'm into off-road, I'm into fast, I'm into all the things that that boat represents, but I wanna build it bigger and I wanna build it better. And um, nothing against that boat. That, that boat is one of a kind and uh, uh, legendary mini boat for sure um, but thanks to Blake got together with him awesome guy we've become friends and um, he gave me ad advice along the way on uh, things that uh, work and don't work then if you watched any of my videos you see that my wife always would go out with me and uh, was always wanting to drive so I was never getting to drive the mojo boat so it was time to build her her own boat the 33 boat started again as a 12 foot Buccaneer, lower hull. Then we took it to Extreme Motorsports, worked with Wyatt to build the cage. And you'll notice the cage on the Mojo boat's a little different. We've got the down tubes here, a little more off-road looking. This boat we were trying trying for a little cleaner, more feminine look, if you if you could have a feminine look in a mini boat. No handles on the front like we have here. Um, still May Adam, as you can see. We had Ultra Deck cut in where they go. The, the uh, nut zerts are underneath here, right here. So it would be real easy to just cut this out or just find the hole and put those handles on. So we may or may not add the handles still up in the air. There's not nothing to really grab here when we come up to shore. So probably gonna be adding these handles back in. All the body work on this, this is all molded aluminum. The whole thing and it, those of you that watch this boat get built you already know all this people that are watching this for the first time all aluminum from current fab my buddy daryl owns current fab in tracy california did all of that the dash say so now a one-piece dash again if you watch this build take place you saw that daryl built this whole dash out of pieces of aluminum, all hand welded. Probably the most expensive part on this whole boat 
right now as far as uh, other than the engine and uh, the hull you know actually it's probably more than that um, most expensive part on this boat is this dash all hand molded now what do we got on the dash we got Lenco trim trim controls running the trim tabs in the back of the boat we've got the standard jet ski controls for uh, mode cruise control BTS all the modes buttons we've got the start button we've got the horn the standard cluster gauge we've got all the uh, light controls here we actually end up with one button left so we're still good we got the stereo Rockford Fosgate system put in by mobile solutions in Brentwood California we've got the Garmin with all of the engine instruments. I don't know if that shows up on video, but all the engine instruments are on there. And it's got nav and so on. We've got a halo mirror. And we actually had that built into the tube so that it's part of the part of the the frame that's in here. Got the oh shit handles here and here. Can't remember what uh, what type of mirror we bought, but the Mojo Boat has the same ones. And uh, basically, you just take this beauty ring off, send it off, have it powder coated so it matches. Got PRP seats. We've got the WBV adjustable seats with seat heater buttons on them and slide control so they can slide. Look at how solid that seat is. Look at doesn't move at all. I am literally trying to move it and it doesn't move and ultra deck this color we waited a long time in fact we put the boat build on hold so that we could get this color for this boat and as you can see the dash is beautiful we've got a rigid light bar in the front now that light bar originally, believe it or not, was for the Mojo Boat. And when we built the Mojo Boat, we stuck it on there. Just didn't look right. Mojo Boat needed to be a little more beefy. So we built uh, this with uh, Extreme Motorsports, Wyatt. And if you watch that video, um, you know he did all that work and all this roll cage. Um, my son and I did the main roll cage and Wyatt finished it. And then this one here, Wyatt built the whole thing. We've got a bunch of J Industry parts on here. All the vents, the blower vents. This is the blower vent. That's the intake grate for the engine. We've got all the links, brackets, all powder coat colored. Um, the stomp grate, all the cool handles with the uh, carbon fiber. This is real carbon fiber, not the fake stuff. Just like on the Mojo boat, pretty much the same stuff, just all color coordinated to the to the boat no stomp crate big mistake if you can have one put one um, haven't had a whole lot of trouble with it but you but you you know you got to be sm smart about where you go you got the swim steps that we put on both boats and those are priceless when you're out in deep water and getting in and out of the boat we got the pink buoys set up just like the mojo boat you might be saying, what are those? These are what are called lead wakes. We got the Mojo Orange lead wakes, and we got the 33 Pink lead wakes. Megan's are 35 pound bags. There's three of them back there. The Mojo boat has three 50 pound bags. When you're in the boat by yourself, and it's no exception with Megan, these bags add ballast. So it's like having a passenger with you. And the further back we can get them, like that, and they don't mess up the boat. The further back we can get them like this, it balances out the boat so the boat doesn't um, start chine locking on the water where it starts rocking back and forth. And it keeps the boat level when she's sitting in here or I'm sitting in here. Without them, the boat leans a lot. 
and uh, the mojo boat more than hers because the mojo boat has a whole bunch of stuff coming up the right uh, or the left side gunnel and there's probably a hundred pounds of wiring alone coming up that left side gunnel on the mojo boat that causes it to list even with nobody in it so that ballast takes care of that problem we've got the marker lights for the front navigation lights it's a pop-up system pretty nice and clean versus the mojo one the old style which is a flip over we were running the 5150 whips mm -hmm. and a bee and a fish fish are jumping all around me here got the 5150 whips um, awesome whip with the quick disconnects right here same as the mojo boat 5150s with the mojo flags need to get some 33 flags but for now 5150 whips awesome whips it's a pro armor steering wheel with the TCM horn button we did the cup holders in here these will hold a big Yeti so not like the little coke holders back there those will hold a big Yeti glove box vents if you watched the video of this being built you know this connects to those vents and causes positive pressure in there did it work it probably takes 50% of that spray away so I'm pretty happy with the intake and the the vents you got the glove box all lined with ultra deck completely lined in ultra deck all removable keeps your caps for our 5150 whips to keep them clean in here emergency kit some rags usb adapter in case you want to charge something We're probably going to end up putting that somewhere in here maybe figure out a home for it or maybe even between right in here somewhere convenient got the rockford phosgate 12 inch subwoofer the six and a halfs up here on both sides you got six and a halfs here on both sides and six and a half tower speakers both sides got the rigid chase light just like the mojo boat no rear camera on this this boat great idea doesn't work very well regular mirror way better so people ask what headsets we use we use the cardu pack talk bold pros and cons about this headset pro is it actually works pretty good the sounds not bad volumes not bad you can play um, your music on here you can answer your phone on here uh, this thing will do a lot more things than we actually do with it um, communication if you put the antenna up like that it's pretty darn good maybe to that tree way over there maybe a little bit further than that and you still have pretty crisp clear communication with these we've tried other headsets and have wasted a bunch of money on a bunch of stuff that doesn't work the negative of this headset and i think they're all this way except for maybe rugged is that there's no there's no uh, feedback in other words when you talk on a on a normal headset you hear yourself talk so you don't so you clearly know that it's working on this set there's no feedback there's no talk back in your ear so you have to wait for the person to answer the um advantage disadvantage is that it's a live system meaning that it's always live so no matter what the other person's saying I'm always hearing it, so if she's on her boat talking to a friend, I get the whole conversation. So you got to be a little careful about that. Rugged radius, um, we use those for the Delta Assault, and unfortunately none of that stuff's waterproof. And I don't know why Rugged hasn't come up with a waterproof plug system yet, but uh, constantly was chasing water in the plugs, causing them to not work, and had to um, just just chasing our tail with the radios however when they work they work good they work for a long distance and they're crisp clear and have a um, a feedback so that you can actually hear so we have the cleats here that pop out to tie the boat off but we also have the quick clip buoys and I can tell you 
if you're thinking about doing that one of the smartest things they did to the mojo boat in this boat you pull up you snap them in they protect your boat you snap them back into the inside of the boat and there they hang all done one here one here another one another question i get asked where'd the windshields come from the windshields came out of we believe a 97 ford ranger if you want the numbers off the window there they are i can tell you on both of these builds we went through two windows on each one as the guy's trying to do the body work on on them he ends up breaking the window and it's not his fault it's just difficult so if you think about putting a glass window in a boat and doing it to this level where it's literally buried into the into the bodywork like these are you need to have a really good body guy and you need to plan on buying at least two and sometimes three windows when we used to build the off-road cars we would go through two to three windows on every car trying to get them cut to fit and and molded and so on these are not cut at all they're stock so now that they're done any window company can come in pop that window out put a new window in and uh, we're no worse for wear we've got the both the front lights both on separate controls as as we mentioned we've got the the bar light here a lot of different options when it comes to that we've got the whips for lighting we've got fish lighting in the back multiple color we've got under lighting under the rail here uh, under dash lighting that goes into the engine compartment back in here and back in here so it kind of lights up the engine compartment we did another custom toolbox like the mojo boat i think those are the only two boats that have them right now and troy's probably going to start including that as an option uh, you know if you've watched any of his videos which if you're watching this you probably have all the same stuff pretty much other than the intake that we custom designed for the mojo boat that runs up here and picks up in a water trap box with the vent over there got the um, 20 gallon fuel tank j industry part on the top of that it's kind of standard now the rotax 300 horse which is about 310 now because of the the, the simple mods that troy does and that came out of an rx px we didn't do the rsr grate in the back on this one we did the jet stream grate maybe not as good a flow as the rsr but you look at the bottom of this boat it's completely dry because it has a pickup system right here that sucks all the water and scavenges all the water out of the hull when you're running the mojo boat does not have that big mistake don't don't go that route go this route this is the right way to do it you won't have problems getting the water out of the hull so notice if you've been following my channel the mojo boat does not have umhw megan's boat has umhw i believe that's part of why her boat tends to be very nose heavy because all that weight forward and we're going to pull the boat out of the water and do some do some massaging of the umhw i know um Cletus had a problem with this whole design when he fixed it and put the new UMHW on there and um, he was able to to clean it up and get it to work right so we're gonna have to pull this boat out and do that it tends to once it gets about I don't know, 40 miles an hour it gets up on the nose and starts driving the nose in the mojo boat does not do that it's just the opposite the mojo boat wants to porpoise so we added the trim tabs to the mojo boat and I'll be doing a video on that and was that worth the investment and um, how we put them on where we put them uh, how they work I'm gonna do a whole video on that so uh, well worth watching if you're building one of these boats and you want to find out the tricks on how to make them ride right watch that video it'll be coming down the tubes down the YouTubes light her up